I try to fix broken electronics. Today, I'm working on a PlayStation 2 Slim that has no power at all. I've already tried to fix it in my last video, and if you saw that, you'll know where I'm at. But if you haven't, I'll leave a link up here and in the description down below so that you can check out that video if you want to see how I got to this point. Also in that video, I do manage to fix a PS2 Slim that doesn't want to read discs. Pretty interesting fix if you want to check that out as well. But let's get started and try and fix this no power PS2 Slim. So we're trying to determine what is wrong with this board, why it doesn't work. There is, as we'll see here, a short on the board and that we need to find. I've already done some probing because I wanted to save myself some time. And this is what I found. We'll turn on our voltage injection tool here. And I have it set pretty high because I had to have it set somewhat high in order to uh, find the short because it's very difficult to find. And I don't think it's going to come through on here, but this cap right here, when I inject voltage, gets warm. It's the only thing on the board that gets warm. It doesn't even really, you know, the alcohol doesn't evaporate. <laughs> um, but it does get warm to the touch. So that is going to be the first place I start to look at. You can definitely feel that cap right there. Nothing else around it. Just the top of the cap. So getting warm. So that is what we're going to replace. I do have this board and this cap. So if I can get this cap off without tearing any traces, which would be very nice. And if I can get this cap off, then I'll be very happy with that. All right, so I will go through the process of what I did just for anyone who has a voltage injection tool and is for some reason looking to me for advice. I initially had it set and I had it like this at about one volt and maybe half an amp or an amp. And I would, since it was shorted here and I just took, attached it to ground here and injected voltage here to see what it did. It pulled the voltage way down and the amperage peaked out at, you know, half an amp or an amp or whatever I set it on. So I, I slowly incremented the amperage to one volt or to one amp, one and a half amps, eventually topping out at, let's see, what did I top out at? Two amps. And then I bumped up the voltage to two volts as well. And only then was I able to feel any heat coming from this. I, nothing else was getting warm. Nothing showed with the alcohol test, nothing evaporated. So it was only when I managed to just touch this while injecting voltage that I discovered that this is what's getting warm. Hopefully that means this is what's shorted and that is the only thing on the board shorted. It's not, um, unusual for caps to go bad. None of these caps, you know, look bad. Even this cap here, it's not bulged or anything. Let's see. Yeah, you can see it's not bulged. So nothing, no indication that it is bad, but it is getting warm. So we're going to start there. Now, as for trying to take off these capacitors, there's a lot of different methods to removing these electrolytic capacitors, but there's not really a good way to take them off. You don't really want to use hot air. You can but you risk the capacitor blowing up, which is not what I want. If you twist it, you can remove the capacitor, but in that case, you're again, destroying the capacitor in the process. It's not an issue if you have another capacitor to replace, like a strip of capacitors, but in this case, I didn't have another capacitor to replace it with. I was gonna have to remove the other capacitor from the donor board and use that. So I couldn't risk destroying that capacitor in the process. So I needed to get that one off without, you know, ripping the pads or ripping the leads from the capacitor. And you know, the real problem with these, this is a pretty 
decent size electrolytic capacitor and they have pretty big pads so you have to get a lot of heat in there to melt the solder and there's this plastic piece around it that you're going to unfortunately probably melt in your attempt to remove it it's just the way it is and also they're on two separate pads which is really hard to do when you have a soldering iron if you had hot tweezers maybe that might be helpful um again because the hot air is not what you want to use so the first thing I did was try and remove the bad capacitor without destroying it. And but to do that, I added some flux, then added some leaded solder to help bring that melting temperature down. And then came in with my two soldering irons to try and melt both at the same time. And it didn't really work. It, it just wasn't getting the job done. And I eventually kind of just like dug at it with the soldering iron and ended up having to twist it off a bit and I did end up breaking the bad capacitor but with that cap now gone you see that are in continuity mode so that it beeps when they touch to two grounds beep doesn't beep so all right well the short is relieved question now becomes can I get the next one off <laughs> without destroying it but for the next one I did learn a little bit of how to remove this better I came in with the same flux and um, let it solder to help lower the temperature again and then then I came in with a soldering station and a pair of tweezers to kind of just pry at the capacitor while heating it up and just get a little bit of movement get it to kind of you know separate from the board i didn't want to pry too hard didn't want to risk pulling those legs out from the capacitor itself and also you know i wasn't too worried about ripping the pad on this but i wanted to try and do it without causing any damage if i could i just wanted to break the connection from the capacitor to the board one at a time a little back and forth action and um little by little it finally did come free and it was in perfect work working order and then reattaching it was just a simple matter of resoldering it back in place and boom the short was gone but unfortunately our problem still remained <laughs> Our input and these two are ground and they are and this is not so no longer grounded this fuse is still good These fuses look still good. All the fuses appear to be still good. Now, for the moment of truth, we plug it in. And still no light. No. Nothing. Put this in here. We got our multimeter set to voltage. What do we have? We now have voltage coming in here. So it's not zero. That's good. So before it was zero. Anything blown? No, no, no. None of those. Again, three volts over here. So I should probably be getting a light. Maybe something on here is not right. This is kind of messed up. Oh, look at that. Okay. Let me try something real fast. So we did get a light. I hope it came through on the camera. We did get a light. Maybe that 
ribbon cables a little iffy on here. Let's see, if we don't have that piece in here, what happens? Oh, okay. And no, see, it's something's going on with this thing. This ribbon cable is not good. I don't like it. Okay, so there's something interesting here. So when this is connected to ground, because for some reason it's not now, I get a light. And I get a green light. But I don't get any fan spin. Okay, now I'm going to ask for some help. What is going on here? Do you think I just need a new ribbon cable because it's making a bad connection? Or what? When I... This is touched the ground, I get a red light. If I push it, nothing happens. When I touch this to green, this one to ground, I get a green light. But again, nothing happens. But I've tried different ribbon cables and that didn't work. Still don't like the look of this ribbon cable. Obviously, but I'm getting no, no fan spin. So it's not like that's doing anything. So, oh bother, oh well, still can't fix it, but that cap was shorted and that was preventing me from getting this far. I am just going to have to do some more research or hopefully somebody out there can help out. And unfortunately, we weren't able to fix that PS2 Slim. We did still fix the other PS2 Slim for Anthony that had disc reading issues, but I just don't know where to go with this one. If anyone has any tips, any thoughts, let me know uh, in the comments or reach out fixmorewasteless at gmail.com. I it, still a lot of great practice, you know, trying to find a short. I do think I found that short was the first time I've used my voltage injection tool actually to find a short. So kind of cool. Got that capacitor that was clearly not working and uh, re managed to replace it with a working one from a donor board. Managed to improve my technique on the second one so that I didn't have any rip pads or didn't damage the capacitor. So that was cool. I, it does light up sometimes but maybe that was just parts touching that shouldn't um don't know why it won't start i don't know if it's the ribbon cable or if it's the the board but even trying to short the two pins that you can didn't do anything so unfortunately gonna have to call that a no fix for now but that's just how it goes sometimes with these repairs you're not gonna fix everything well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something useful and we'll catch you in the next one where we hopefully can fix our console.